you tell me about the uh, anti-apartheid movement at the UC Berkeley campus that you were involved with? Um, so, certainly can. Um, I, I need to go back a bit, though, to say that the, the movement that arose in Berkeley um, was part of a long movement that had begun uh, as soon as apartheid had begun in, in the 1940s and even earlier. It was a different form of racial oppression in South Africa, more like um, things that we experienced in the South, perhaps, uh, in, in the 40s and 50s there. In the United States. In the United States. Um, we, uh, Americans, black Americans first, uh, were speaking out against what was happening in South Africa. And in the, in the 40s, the first groups formed, and into the 50s of black, both black and white Americans, who were speaking out in the United States. Uh, that movement continued through the 60s and the 70s. And the first big movement on campuses uh, about apartheid uh, was in, in the late 70s, after a major uprising in South Africa occurred, called the Soweto Uprising. And on this campus was one of probably 150 around the United States in the late 70s, where there were sit-ins and torchlight marches and arrests and you know rallies and all all the things that, that Americans and, and others do to protest. Um, but in the 1980s, again, it was it was spurred by a new uprising in South Africa. In South Africa, even bigger than the one in the 1970s, and that moved us here. Uh, I wasn't a student, but I knew students on the campus. I knew some staff on the campus. And we got together and we said, we've, we've got to do something. And that started in the fall of 1984. Uh, we built up with demonstrations and rallies and some sit-ins. Uh, I think in the early, late 1984, after longshoremen uh, over in San Francisco refused to unload South African cargo, and after demonstrations had started at the embassy, the South African embassy in Washington, D.C., um, those demonstrations led, um, and, and mostly, of, of, of black Americans. We said we've got to escalate here. We sat in at University Hall, which is where the, uh, the office of the Regents was, and 38 of us were arrested, many going as Steve Biko, who was a, um, a murdered South, a black South African leader in, in the 1970s. Uh, when the, the term began in January, of 1985, we had many small demonstrations and building up and doing all sorts of agitational things, putting tables in places where they weren't allowed, that, that caused conflicts with the police, which drew many people into the movement. Uh, in the spring of 1985, um, some students uh, who, who thought something more had to be done after a rally, they refused to get up and they said, we're staying here until we force a vote on uh, divestment by the regents, the trustees of the university who manage several billion dollars of um, uh, stocks uh, in companies, uh, American companies which were operating in South Africa. I should be clear that the major issue here was about divestment, and, and, and that is the, the ending of the university's investments in those companies like IBM or Bank of America. So we had a very specific target, and that made it a lot easier for us. It wasn't just a sort of general anti-apartheid thing. Um, in, in, in that spring, the students sat down, and the university made a mistake and allowed them to spend the night and the next night, and more people joined them. And after six days, the university said, oh my god, we made a mistake, we better arrest them before it gets too big. And they came in and they arrested 141 of us, 140 of us, and uh, we did everything we can to delay the arrest. And so by the time we were all arrested and being put on buses to be taken away, there were thousands of people there watching this. And some of them blocked buses, and then most of them, many thousands, retook these same steps of the administration building this on Sproul Plaza that we had renamed Biko Plaza, again after Stephen Biko. 
Mm. And that sit-in and the encampment continued for another 37 days, so a total of 43 days. Rallies and, and boycotts and student boycotts, and uh, the biggest since the 1960s. And everyone said, oh, it was the 60s again. It was never quite that big, but it had that feeling, that excitement. Um, the regents finally agreed to vote on divestment, and they voted against it. The majority voted against it. Um, we continued that summer organizing ourselves, and when the new term began in the fall of 1985, I think in the first week we had five or six demonstrations. You know, even a couple in a day. So that fall we had many, many demonstrations and attempted different things. There were sit-ins again inside the administration building. But we were never able to, to get the same numbers uh, that, that we had the year before.